macro analysis, the Bitcoin macro analysis. And we're looking at a uh, monthly chart on Bitcoin stretching back to 2012. Uh, we've got the two previous halvings marked off on the chart. And this will be relevant because we're going to be talking about supply side um, in relationship to price and stock to flow. I'm sure everybody's heard of the uh, stock to flow indicator uh, popularized by Plan B. Um, it's become a little bit of a meme recently, but I think that's a mistake just because, um, you know, compared to other models, especially from traditional finance, um, stock to flow has one of the highest correlation coefficients, you know, of any model really that's been released or at least available for public view. Um, so I, I don't think it's a good idea to dispel um, this. Um, I think I think it'll have implications going forward. Now, I actually prefer the uh, stock to flow deflection over the uh, you know just the original stock to flow, uh, and the reason being is it 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 graphs the uh, supply to price ratio on on relative terms on the vertical axis, so you kind of you know get a better idea of the fundamental value of Bitcoin in relationship to its price. So, you know, because Bitcoin is constantly going up, right? And if we look at the, you know, the big picture, right? It's essentially going up on the macro at all times, except for brief bear markets. And when you look at this chart, that's essentially Metcalf's law on a chart. You're looking at that Metcalf's law in price action on the macro, of course. Um, so, you know, people will typically look at this and they'll, they're always going to look at price if they haven't been participating in the market and they're going to look at it as overextended, even though it may not necessarily be overextended, right? There were, there were some good buys in here, but if you're looking at, at it from the frame of reference of down here, like, oh man, I missed, I could have, I started learning about Bitcoin at $7 and now it's $600 or I'm sorry, now it's $2,000, I really missed the boat, right? And that's sort of a natural thing to think. Um, but if you were if you were referencing this model, you would say, okay, actually, this is still a good buying opportunity here. We're deep in premium. And so it's just a good frame of reference point, you know, in determining how to accumulate and distribute your underlying spot holdings. Obviously, this would, you know, not be the ideal model to look at if you're doing intraday trading. But if we look at it in the context of current price action, I mean, you look at this model and in the uh, summer accumulation phase, I mean, you really hit extremes. I mean, everybody talks about how they wish they could have bought Bitcoin back here, right? When it was for pennies. But this model is indicating that, you know, some of the fundamental the potential for the uh, the value of Bitcoin to expand to the upside from here is pretty extreme. It doesn't mean that it will happen. It's just no guarantee. Obviously, there's no guarantee in trading. The Bitcoin network could fail. It could go to zero. But from an objective, if you to take a step back and examine it objectively, the value of Bitcoin on a fundamental level, um, it's... I would believe, I believe it's quite undervalued right now. And it's just interesting to see that that belief is sort of contrary to the sentiment in the market right now. People are looking at the market and they're seeing how extended it is. Maybe they're framing their, you know, they're framing their chart like this and looking for, you know, they're looking for 30K to break and then all the way down to some people are calling for 10K. Now, I'm not saying that that can't happen. I'm just saying that it's probably not the best perspective to be holding.